What's up everyone, Steven here from TechMaker. This is Building an NFT Bookstore, part four. We finished up the last episode um, adding some stuff to our publish function. And what I wanna do in this episode is just finish this out so that we're actually making use of this currency argument. And then I wanna refactor the code just a little bit. So that's the game plan for this episode. And then in the next episode, I think we'll work on adding in the ability to buy uh, a book version. So with all of that said, let's just jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and I want to write another test. Um, actually, I don't need to. I, I wrote this last time to kind of be a little bit of two tests in one. It correctly sets the price and currency. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually just copy this last little bit here and we'll say uh, book version currency. So we'll say let book version currency equal get book version currency and we'll pass in the ID here. Now in typical fashion, I'm going to go ahead and just comment out these next lines because what we just wrote should in fact uh, break the code, or break the test rather. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically come over here and uh, write a method called book version currency. And uh, we can actually just copy this uh, right here, book version price. And so we have book version currency it takes the ID, which is a UNT256, public view returns, and instead of a number, what we actually wanna do is return an address, and that's gonna be a token address. And actually, I am getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let's just comment that out. Um, and then let's get rid of, let's just finish the function here, comment that out. So if I run the test, now it should basically pass because now I do have this function. Again, I'm trying to follow TDD pretty carefully here. I know this is a little bit uh, obnoxious probably, but uh, that's kind of the way uh, to do it so that you make sure that every bit of code you write is tested. So basically, uh, book version price, we don't need any of that. We'll say book version currency equals, uh, you know what, we don't, we might not need to do anything because I bet that just comes back as a string. And then what we'll do is just say assert book version currency is equal to this. Okay, so now if I run the test, it should be failing. And again, I could just return this. Um, I could hard code this into that function and just straight up return that address, but I don't think I'm gonna do that here. Um, what I wanna do, cause I'm just gonna kinda skip ahead a little bit uh, to make the video not super, super long. But basically what we need to do is return an address and we'll uncomment this and we'll say uh, book version uh, currencies, which we don't have yet. And then what we'll do up here is say, uh, we want a mapping of uint 256, which is going to be that ID to address. And that's going to be private book version currencies. Okay, did I spell all of that right? It looks like it is, it's not yelling at me or anything like that. Okay, so then the next thing I need to do and the last thing I need to do to get this to pass is actually just say uh, book version currencies and then we'll say uh, current book version ID equals currency here, like that. And then now we can uh, Go ahead and run this test again, and we should be passing, I think. Let's see. Okay, we did not get the right thing. So I did a little bit of Googling, and I think I came across the problem. So just so you know, I've got a Ganache 
uh, server chain running here. Uh, so if you didn't download Ganache when you did Truffle, then this won't work for you. But what we can do here is do Truffle console, which will basically log us into a new session so that we can uh, run some Web3 stuff. So I'm gonna do web3.utils. And then um, what I think we can do is to check some address. Is that a function? Yeah, so that's a function. So what I wanna do is basically copy in my address that I wrote over here and paste this in. And so you see that we get back the the same capitalization that we got from the from the uh, test failure. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just copy this, um, and uh, we'll we'll basically just say uh, let expected equal that, and we'll save that, and then I'll change this to be assert that the book version currency is expected. So I read a bit about this checksum thing, but I don't know enough about it to like thoroughly explain it yet. So maybe we'll talk about it later. Um, but for now, let's just uh, control D out of there. Uh, and then I'm gonna do um, truffle test. Let me make sure I saved this first. Um, I did not mean to do network rink B. Uh, truffle test. Um, and let's see if this passes now. Hopefully it does, because uh, that's the only thing that I found. So, okay, it looks good. So I updated my Mac OS last night, and uh, I'm getting a little bit of a weird feedback all of a sudden, so I don't know what's going on, so I apologize if you hear weird noise. Also, for some reason, there's a lot of trains going by my place today, so... Sorry for all the random background noise, but anyway. So, okay, our, our tests are passing now. So the last thing I wanna do in this episode is just some refactoring. Um, basically what we can do in here is use a slightly nicer data structure uh, to keep track of all of our book version details. So a lot of people misuse the word refactoring to mean just changing the code or improving something. Maybe even some people talk about refactoring to add a new feature. Uh, none of that is the right definition of refactoring. Refactoring means that you do not change the behavior of the code, but you change basically the implementation of the code. So we're going to refactor in the true sense where we have tests here. Uh, we will not ever make our tests red is the idea. Um, so we'll change minimal code, we'll run the tests, so on and so forth. Um, anyway, so let's kind of dig into it. So essentially, this is going to be really simple. Um, what I want to do is have a new data structure that's called a struct. And so we'll say struct. And what I'm going to do is say uh, book version like this. I think I'm going to call it this. We'll see. I may change it. Um, and this book version is going to have a uint256 for the price. We'll have a... Let's see, an address for the currency, like that. Um, let's see, what else? Actually, that should be a semicolon, not a comma. Kind of thinking about it like JavaScript there. Okay, so let's leave it at that for now. And then up here, we'll have a instead of having a UN256 pointing at a UN256, we're gonna have a UN256 pointing at, you know what, let me leave those, because I said I wasn't gonna break the test, and that would break the test, so we'll leave everything until we're done. So we'll have UN256 pointing at a book version, like that. Um, and we need to give that a title We'll call it private book versions, okay? And basically what we wanna do is inside of our uh, code here, all I wanna do is say book versions, and then we'll have a current book version ID. 
equals, and then we'll have um, book version and that's going to take arguments for the things that we want to pass in. So we'll just say price and currency. And let's save this and let's run our test. So we haven't actually changed any behavior yet. So just to kind of highlight, like the code that we wrote should basically just not impact anything. And um, we'll run the test and just make sure that everything compiles and nothing is broken. But in theory, we haven't done a thing. We just wrote in some code that doesn't doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so, but I, I shouldn't say it doesn't do anything. It just doesn't change the actual behavior of what we've written so far um, at all. So we have a new mapping that's basically an ID to this new book version struct, which takes two arguments at the moment, um, price and currency. And then we're basically setting up a book version here. Um, we're leaving all the rest of this alone. So what we can do now to check the, the, if this works is we can just change the book versions or we can change these, these calls down here and we can do them one at a time. Um, to actually reference our new struct. So we'll say book versions, book versions ID dot uh, price, like that. And let's run our test here again, and let's see if we're still green. And if so, then we can just change our currency and then delete several things, um, and we should still have green tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, and all we're going to do is call currency on it. So basically what I did here, and this is really, really simple, obviously, but all that I did here is like, instead of trying to change a bunch of code that's going to actually break the test for a while, we basically shim in code that allows us to make one single line change and have the test still be green and then make another single line change and have this test still be green. And then now we can actually delete a bunch of stuff and we can delete these set setters here and run the test and we should be still good to go. And let's see, looks like we're good, I think. Okay, cool. So we didn't really do anything in terms of the functionality there, but we made our code a lot more readable. Um, so when you read this now, you don't have all these random mappings and have to try to sort through exactly what's going on. Um, we've got a, a declared concept here with defined attributes. And then down here, we're basically initializing one of those objects, um, which I think you can think of a struct, basically just like a value object. Like it's just an object that holds attributes. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, and it makes this pretty easy to see what's going on here. So anyway, um, I like this quite a bit. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. Um, in the future, we had a note that we might add like the book ID because remember, this is the book version ID. And um, that's because we could have like first edition of a book and all this kind of stuff. And, and behind the scenes, actually, you would think of like the first edition or the second edition of a book as the same book. It's just a different version of the book. So at least that's how I'm thinking about the data modeling there. So um, if you, you should recognize that if you watch the first videos in this series. But in any case, I think that what we're going to do, we may push some more attributes into this, which should be pretty trivial now. Um, but I think up next, what I want to do is get into how to actually buy a book. Um, so that's going to require us to do a few new things and I'm going to do all of that in one big episode, maybe two. I don't know. Let's see. We may have to split it up, but we'll see. I think we should be able to get it, get it done in, in just one. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's do that next and I'll talk to you over in the next one. See you later.